Right, I'm just doing an update on my Toyota and where I'm at at the moment. Um, if you watched my previous videos on how to map, how to set the car up, then great. If not, um, probably suggest you go watch them before this video. Um, the first thing I've done since last time is, if you'll notice from the other video, I've removed the little pipe there. And what that does is it, it lets the car run 0.65 bar instead of 0.4 bar. Um, and I've also mapped it to suit that. So I've, I've edited all the fuel tables, which you can see on my mapping video, um, and I've made them again so that the AFRs on boost retain about 10.5-ish. Um, I've actually aimed now more for 10.8 than 10.5, uh, just to lean lean the car out a little bit, but again, nowhere near enough to, to cause any damage, hopefully. Um, and a few more things I've done as well. Um, just show you inside the car. Um, so I've got a few other bits and bobs. Um, so I've got some headphones here. Explain what's going on there. Uh, I've actually got this circuit here, which I've built. Um, I was in a quest to sort of get more timing into the car safely. As I mentioned in my other videos, it's very, very difficult without a dyno to, to monitor timing and knock or pre-detonation, uh, which occurs obviously when you're either too far advanced on boost or too lean on boost. So that's really hard to monitor. So the way I've I've sort of got around it is, and up to now, um, it is a working setup. This and you can make it. This is a kit from Maplin Electronics that you have to build yourself. Um, I've just tie wrapped it there. It takes three AA batteries, and it's it's called a Super Stereo here. Which is a bit, a bit, a bit of a crap name to be honest. But basically, it is a circuit board with volume control on the potentiometer there that you can twist like a little dial. It has auxiliary preamplified headphone output there, so you can either connect that to headphones, which I've just showed you on my um on my passenger seat, or I've actually wired it into the auxiliary input on my stereo. And then if you see the two speaker wires there on the actual. On the actual uh, diagram that you get with the kit, they are actually microphones. Um, so the idea with that is they solder actually onto the board there and the microphones sit on the board. But I've extended the two wires and then I've, you can't really tell very well there, but I've, I've joined them together. So I've got the negative of the two microphones. There's, there's two little wire inputs on there, so positive and negative for the right right microphone, then positive and negative there for the left microphone. That's shown in the instructions. So the white striped wire is the negative on both of them. And they wire together. So the two negatives wire together, as do the two positives. And then that gives me in total two wires which run to the engine bay. Um, I know there's four there on that plug, but they do actually go down to two, and it's just two you can see it at the other side there, look, the black ones. There's literally just two wires, so both negatives and both positives together. There's two wires. So I'll just show you what happens to that in the engine bay. Um, I'll just try and find the best angle for this. If you see the wire there that, that sort of floats across in the middle of nowhere to that goldy coloured bolt, that is a General Motors knock sensor off of a Vauxhall Vectra. Um, and similar to like this hole here that you can see, um, that bolt bolts to the block directly. Um, and it's like, the knock sensor is like a sort of metal donut with a hole in the middle, and the bolt goes through the middle, and I've tied it right up to the block. So that super stereo here thing that's meant for God knows what, like the hard of hearing, or, or whatever you want to use it for, that is actually, it's listening now to a knock sensor rather than than um, microphones. I did actually have learned about what I used before. I used these before. I'll show you. If you can't get all of a knock sensor, this still sort of works, but it's basically a crocodile clip. And then the microphones that came with the kit there, and I've glue gunned them face down to the crocodile clip. And obviously you can clip them onto your block or however you want to do that um, and obviously prior to the setup that's on the car now I had two of them 
hence the two microphone inputs. So all I've literally done is like the negatives of both, like I explained a second ago, I've wired together and the positives I've wired together. And then I wired them straight to the, the knock sensor. This was the plug off the knock sensor that I've stripped back. It has three pins, but most knock sensors only have two pins. Inside a knock sensor there's like a, a crystal microphone, which is like sort of dialed into certain frequencies rather than being broad like a normal microphone. So the three wires there, you can't see very well, but there's only actually two wires inside that. I'll try and focus it. There's two core wires in the middle. No, you can't really see it. God knows. Nope. No, we're going to struggle there. Basically, the I figured out that two of the pins are actually wires inside there, and the third pin is just the shielding around the outside. If you know what like a shielded cable is, it's just like strands around the main two wires. But as a rule of thumb, if you get the if you get the two wires that have come out of that circuit board, and you wire them you wire them like directly to two of the wires on your knock sensor. If it is a two wire knock sensor. Or just, just pick two if it's a three wire knock sensor and that will work quite well. Um, so the kit, it just has, like I showed you, it just has a little switch there for on and off. Which lights up the little red LED. On and off. And then volume control. Like I said, I've got it through my stereo. I'll show you how it all works. 0.65 bars. It's quite decent to be fair, it's a lot better than 0.4 bar, and the engine's taking it quite well. Like I said, just extended the map, um, like I showed you how to do in the mapping video, and that, that sorts it out. Sorts out the fuel in. So, I'll shut the door. So this is the car at the minute, um, without that working, without the kit working. So if I put my stereo on, auxiliary input. Like I said, you can do this with headphones or however you want to do it. But, so there we go. And then I, when I turn on the kit, there's a bit of interference. But as I'll show you in a second, you can definitely hear like any knock above the above the interference. So I'll just rev the car a little. Like. If you listen to the this without that, that is like a really clear sound from the engine. It's, it's the same as having like a stethoscope or a, I don't know, like a screwdriver pushed to the block and next to your ear. Turn it back on again. And that's it off. And then on. You can hear everything that's going on in the engine um, really well. And you can actually hear if it detonates. I'll just turn it off a second. So, in a second, I'll show you the sort of sound you're gonna you're gonna be listening to if, if it does detonate. I'm not gonna make the car detonate because um, that'd be really bad. Uh, I've heard a couple of little detonations or what I think are detonations, um, and the sort of goal for me now is to keep advancing the timing through all the loads and rev ranges until until I do hear um, hear detonation, and then what I'll do is I'll retard the timing back. So that'll sort of let me know how much I can advance the timing before I hear a detonation. So that's the point where I can make the most power safely without doing damage to the motor. So so that's my goal from now on. Um, I'm still leaving the fuel in at like at like 10 and a half. Like I said it before, I've, I've pushed it up to 10.8, but anywhere between 10 and a half and 10.8 is now my sort of window of accuracy that I'm going for. Um, and with, with the timing monitoring, um, Sorry, the, the, the deck cams, the electrical deck cams I've made, I can obviously now, I can do the timing. So what I'll do now is I'm going to go around to the, the front of the car um, and I'm going to do a couple of tests. I'll leave the phone in here and I'll turn on the monitoring equipment again. Um, and I'll first of all gently, like really lightly tap the knock sensor, the bolt that goes into the knock sensor with my fingernail. And that'll simulate like, like literally the tiniest little knock and then the second thing I'll do is I'll tap it very very gently again th these are not going to be hard taps you'll hear the noise is loud but these are going to be really really light taps um, I'll do it with a little pebble off the floor 
to seek and hear like what would be a quite not a vicious but the beginnings of a vicious a vicious knock um bear in mind that, that these noises you're going to hear are only going to be light knocks so they are like i said they are very loud but they're going to give you a really really good good sort of warning that, that the car is starting to knock if you are on boost or or what you can hear it over the engine noise because I'll, I'll leave the car running um but yeah yeah if there are any really bad knocks it would be almost deafening through this equipment so right i'll just prop the phone up and i'll i'll do the fingernail test and i'll do the the pebble test so i'll just turn on the equipment again Right, so there we go. That was the first one was a, a light tapping very gently with my fingernail. Second one was a pebble, again lightly tapping. So I can only assume I'll watch the video back, but I can only assume you'll have heard that nice and loud. Um, but yeah, so it cost me like a little Velman kit. Like I said again, it's called the Super Stereo here. If you get that from Maplin, it's like it's like a tenner maximum. Um, get it off eBay for about I don't know about six seven quid maybe, but just go get it from Maplin easy enough you do have to build it yourself so you have to sold all sold all the components together but if you're even all right with a soldering iron or you know roughly how to measure sort of resistors with a multimeter you'll be fine with that um yeah so that that's all in all that's what it is so i'll try and make another update when i've got all the timing right i haven't finished it off yet at all but once i've advanced it all like i said to the point where i can hear a tiny bit of detonation um, I'll pull the timing back, I'll retard it slightly in all of them cells on the mapping software until I can run this about for a while and I can't hear any, any detonation under all sort of loads and circumstances and then that's what I'll settle at but hopefully at that point I'll have the most power I can, I can get out of it at this raised boost level so I hope that's helped a lot I've not seen many videos at all on how to how to rig up equipment like that I've seen a few where you've got like mechanical devices like sort of bored out ear defenders with with tubes going to them and stuff but i felt this was a way better way of doing it and like i said you can always plug that into the into the socket rather than an auxiliary lead or you can use like some little near headphones if you don't want to look a bit of a weirdo while you're driving around i've not used them driving around obviously i'll just they're just here for demonstration purposes but if you use some little in-ear headphones you can can drive about and sort of sort of monitor where you're getting any knock if if you are getting it so yeah so that's a really good really good um bit of information there for, for some people who, who don't know how to sense the knock uh just a, a quick one actually the knock sensor i didn't pick the general motors one specifically so uh if you just sort of pick any knock sensor really it doesn't really matter which one at all that was just going to be the easiest one to mount like i said it was like a donut type it was almost like a thick metal washer with a hole in the middle so i could bolt it to stuff really easily no it wasn't like a, a thread screwing type um but you can use any any knock sensor anyone you've got laying about as long as you can mount it nicely to the block somewhere away from like alternators power steering pumps just away from anything mine's near there sort of near the crank and the cylinder wall so that's not a bad place at all but um yeah just away from from anything that's going to create noise like definitely away from your injector rail you probably know if you've had, if had one of these cars or if you had a few of them, the injector rail it clicks quite a lot so that could be mistaken for knock at higher higher rpms um but yeah i hope that's helped and uh stay tuned for another video when i've got it all set up properly <laughs>